Hi, my name is Kelly Jones. I'm a costume designer and I'm quarantining in Palm Desert. Hi, this is Denise Wingate, costume designer, saying hello to you from my home in Los Feliz, California, where I've been sequestered now for, I guess, two and a half weeks. Hi everybody, it's Ellen Morajnik. I'm a costume designer and I'm in Los Angeles, California. Hi, I'm Meredith Markworth Pollock and I am a costume designer. I'm currently spending quarantine in Los Angeles. I came back here about a month ago with my family. Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Orlandi. I'm a costume designer. Uh, I live in Los Angeles and uh, work wherever the work takes me. But uh, right now we're all hunkered down and I am at home. Sono Daniela Ciancio, costumista di film come Il Divo, La Grande Bellezza, Il Resto di Niente. E eccomi qua, anche io chiusa dentro come tutti noi, eh, ormai da quattro settimane e mezzo. Stavo lavorando a una serie televisiva eh, chiamata Il Re per eh, Whiteside Sky Italia ed è un bellissimo progetto al quale, che seguivo già da un po'. E, dove è molto, il lavoro che mi viene richiesto è molto interessante perché presuppone un grande studio sulle diverse tipologie umane, è un film di ambientazione contemporanea ma comunque con uno sguardo che universalizza un po' il tutto ed è un lavoro molto molto interessante che purtroppo è stato momentaneamente interrotto, speriamo riprenda a breve. Il mio nome è Eva Cohen, eh, faccio la costumista principalmente per progetti cinematografici e televisivi e sono al mio lockdown numero 29. Eh, quando eh, il 10 marzo c'è stato il lockdown a Roma stavo facendo dei provini per un progetto Sky e eh, c'è stato un, un susseguirsi di eventi che ci hanno fatto pensare se era possibile fare questi provini e siamo arrivati al punto di cominciarli a fare senza truccatori e parrucchieri per non andare troppo diciamo, in collisione fra l'attore e i reparti che gli stavano forse troppo vicini ma eh, a un certo punto abbiamo dovuto interrompere. This is what I look at every day, which is nice because the news is so absolutely terrible. Um, we live in LA, but we got this place a couple years ago just to have somewhere to get out of LA and we just kind of want to escape. And so that's been great and we're very grateful to have this. Um, so when this happened, when um, the coronavirus shut everything down, I was doing a movie called Samaritan, which is a Sylvester Stallone superhero movie. And I designed the costumes and they are getting built at Weta, which is um, down in New Zealand. And we'd done one fitting. They came up to Atlanta and we did one fitting and it was great. The costumes are gonna be sick. Um, but then we shut down. And so we were halfway done with shooting. We were six weeks in, we had six weeks to go. So the plan is the first thing I'll be doing when the lockdown lifts, hopefully, is getting on a plane and going back to Atlanta. 
Um, I was in the middle of doing a, prepping a series for Amazon, a wonderful series based on a book called Daisy Jones and the Six, which is uh, a story that takes place in 1970s Hollywood music scene and is basically the accounting of the rise of a, and fall of a, a rock band. Um, and we were really getting in our groove. We were about four weeks out from shooting and we abruptly got shut down because of this horrible, horrible pandemic. Uh, before we went into quarantine, I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and we were shooting season three of Dynasty. We were just about to embark on the last two episodes of the season, which were huge. Um, so we had put in a lot of prep right when we got word that we were gonna be shut down for the season. Um, so, you know, it was a little bittersweet for me, especially I had already made the decision that this was going to be my last season of Dynasty. So I kind of had to run out of there quickly without really getting some proper goodbyes. Um, but, you know, we all had such a good run on that show. We've been together shooting there for three years. So I had a good time and I feel like even though we were rushed out of there, uh, the people who I really needed to to let know the, how much I cared for them and what a good run we had on the show, I was able to reach out. I've been in isolation since March the 16th. Um, I flew back from London on the 15th of March um, where the, the show I was working on was shut down. I'm working on a film called Rebel Dreamer. It's a revisionist Cinderella tale, a fantasy musical starring Camila Cabello. We've completed half of the film. We still have the second half to still shoot and I don't know what'll happen. I don't think anybody does. Um, the crew was a UK based crew. Um, I was the only American. The actors are um, mostly British, but we also have Americans as well. So we're dealing with two borders and a disease that has uh, paralyzed the world. I was working on a project here in town and we shut down three weeks ago and uh, here I am in my office. I've been going through sketches, uh, trying to make heads or tails of them. Uh, you know, trying to stay busy, positive, while uh, we wait for an end to uh, this very weird time. I spend most of my time here in my office. This is my bulletin board where I uh, put things on that mean something to me or amuse me. It might be an old birth announcement from a dear friend or uh, a sketch of a dear friend, uh, little pictures that make me happy, ticket stubs, and uh, all of my different uh, identifications for different projects that I've worked on. I don't worry, I don't have fear, and I feel safe. I feel safe here in Los Angeles in the sanctuary of my little home, and um, I feel blessed, and I'm very, very, very grateful. I'm grateful for good health, I'm grateful for the peace of mind that I have, and I'm grateful that being put on pause has been a blessing. I have found stillness, which I missed tremendously. I don't have a schedule to meet. I don't have demands to adhere to. I don't have people to take meetings with. And I don't have anybody to answer to but myself. And being in stillness helps me be able to reflect, remain calm, find inspiration through reimagination of everything, for opening up my heart, for thinking about contribution, community,
collaboration and all things to make the world a better place. I hope that everybody is uh, safe out there. Um, I'm grateful to have a nice home and a wonderful family, which is uh, allowing me to spend time with my son who's a senior in high school and um, was about ready to graduate and go to NYU in the fall. So we're having a lot of bonding time together, uh, which is uh, I'm grateful for. Um, he's has his own clothing line, so we've been making clothes together and, and doing lots of cooking and hiking and uh, trying to make the best of the situation, which I guess is all anyone can do. Um, it's forced us to slow down a lot, um, which maybe is something we all need to do, especially now. Um, take stock. Uh, we're doing a lot of puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> and playing Scrabble. We're, we're going old school. Um, and watching a lot of movies, a lot of great movies actually. And my son was saying that he's, he's seen movies that he doesn't know if he would have ever taken the time to watch. So we're having a lot of family movie nights. I have kids. <laughs> That's what I do. I have a 10 month old and a five year old. So I'd say 99% of my day is playing with them, cooking for them, entertaining them, cleaning up after them, attempting to nap with them. Uh, and then for that little moment I get for myself, I'm usually taking a shower, going for a walk, sleeping, and occasionally reading. I actually just started a book on tape, Untamed. I'm really excited for that. Uh, but again, it's so hard to find any time to even listen to it. I find myself just laying in bed trying to get in a chapter or two uh, before I pass out. I don't know. It's just one of those things that we all are kind of in this together, but apart, which sucks but you know I have my husband so I'm very thankful for that and then I just realized a lot of stuff that I've taken for granted which is just hanging out with my friends and going anywhere really I mean we're going absolutely nowhere um, and then I'd like to say I was doing something amazingly productive with this time but I am not I have a stack of books that I could be reading and for some reason I think that we're all just so strapped in fear that I just don't have desire to do that right now and I would like to lie and say that I do and that I've been doing all this amazing stuff and I've been doing sketching and I can do it all you know whatever but I just it's been one of those things to where it's I'm watching way too much news and so what I have been doing the past week is I've been doing a lot of meditating and yoga. So I do yoga on my own. It's kind of like this freestyle that I kind of memorized from classes I took in LA years ago. And it's an hour and it's hard. So I'm doing that. And then I am doing, I'm doing it very poorly. This. Trovarmi a camminare negli ultimi giorni di lavoro in una Roma deserta era veramente una, una visione strana, particolare, qualcosa che mette in moto strani, strani sentimenti, strane emozioni. Sembra adesso di stare un po' in guerra, no? di, in effetti è in qualche modo una guerra. Eh, cosa, cosa ha fatto in principio? Ho cercato di mantenere alto l'umore, ho cercato di darmi degli impegni, comunque gli ultimi giorni, cioè i primi giorni eh, c'erano ancora delle cose di lavoro da fare, mail da mandare, contatti, sartorie, eh, brand con i quali stavo lavorando, che comunque richiedeva un attimo di, di cura, no? di, eh, di sentire queste persone al telefono, comunicare la, la, la nostra situazione del momento, eccetera, eccetera. Dopodiché ho cominciato a guardare film, serie televisive, io sono in tre giurie quindi già la quantità di film che vedo ogni anno è molto alta, ma riuscivo appunto per questi motivi a vedere poche serie, per cui ho fatto un po' un recupero di tutte le serie televisive che avevo perso. Devo dire che mi ha preso una, una modalità compulsiva, per cui non, finché non ho finito la serie, le serie che stavo guardando con tutte le loro stagioni facevo fatica a chiudere il computer. L'unica parola che in questi giorni mi gira in testa e che mi fa pensare è il termine confine. Uh, Leila Menshai, che era la famosa vetrinista 
di Hermès di Faubourg saint Henri che ci ha lasciato da poco diceva che i confini erano le cicatrici delle guerre e in questo momento noi abbiamo dei confini che ci siamo costruiti sono, siamo autoconfinati sono disegnati sono disegnati e impercettibili ma molto molto forti e anche questo è abbastanza inedito Excited to get back back to work. Um, I believe. I, I mean, who knows? Who know? I don't think anybody knows. But supposedly, we were supposed to start back up. I I don't know. I can't even get into my office. Um, we were on the Paramount lot, and I can't even go there um, just to get my stuff. I left abruptly when they closed down the lot. But uh, it's all good. I'm I'm being optimistic that we'll be back. Uh, to work soon and that everybody, I think it's going to get really busy um, when this gets under control. Do I think this experience will change my personal and professional life? Yes, yes, it already has. And on a personal level, you know, it's really made me examine my life and what's important to me. And it's just all about family, you know, and career is definitely up there and important. But at this moment, that's, that comes way, 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 way second, you know? Family is first, health is first. And on a professional level, oh, for sure, I think that this is going to change our industry, you know, the way we interact with people on set, with actors, the way we dress actors, the way stories and scripts are going to be presented, it's all going to change. There is something that I am somewhat obsessed with, and that is, uh, something that hasn't left my mind at, at all since this all began. And that is the redesign of the Petri dish that we call work. I mean the entertainment industry. I don't only mean the costume designers branch or the costume design team or just the makeup and hair designers or just the camera. I mean us all. What is that Petri dish really gonna look like? Who has taken leadership in trying to think about this challenge, to work through this challenge. We work in such an intimate environment continually on a daily basis, no matter what it is that we do within our project. We are one-on-one -on -one in closed quarters for the most part, even the most vast location we're still one-on-one -on -one in closed quarters. How do we go back to work? What is this Petri dish going to look like? How does creativity survive in that environment? How do we bring it to life without hurting anybody's life? What is the answer? I don't know. I know it's a challenge. I know it's a big challenge, but I do pray that the day that we walk out into our new world order, that we can breathe deeply, know that we still are safe. The world has changed. It will be for the better. Hopefully we, we will have contributed to our community and made it strong. And that life will go on and we'll make great contributions forever.